Hi folks, today we are starting a new project. It's called uh, Autonomous Vehicle or a Self-Guided Vehicle. Uh, this is my son Mokshim. He is in 7th grade. I am, a, uh, I am a software professional and we both are collaborating on this project. What we are doing is uh, we will want to convert a uh, RC car in a self-guided car and we saw a lot of videos on YouTube and internet to understand how other people have done and based on what we learned on the internet we have now planning to do it slightly different in our own way so first thing what we learned is that people have used very small remote control cars and the problem with them is that then everything kind of gets on top of the car which looks very ugly so we have brought ourselves uh, two RC cars here which uh, we think are large enough so that any, all the electronics that we will put inside this car will actually go inside and then we can have a nice top uh, uh, to cover it all and we don't basically end up in a very ugly looking uh, car and so when we went to shop shop for a remote control car we had two options one is this Hummer which uh, I think is 1 is to 10 scale it's quite big it's about one and a half feet long uh, and uh, the other option for us was to go for move this back the other option was to get something like this which is a more sporty kind of a car uh, it's, a it's, it's called a buggy uh, the problem with this buggy is that it doesn't have space here but it has got a better suspension and um, apparently it has got more speed as well as compared to the Hummer but somehow I like Hummer because it has got a lot of void space inside where we can put all our electronics the one this buggy actually doesn't have a lot of space so if we start building a car on this we will most likely um, fall short of the space and then we will have to get rid of this cover and then everything will start showing up so this is one of the reason why we have chosen this Hummer um, as our uh, platform vehicle for the project um, another uh, thing to consider while purchasing the remote control car is that there are a lot of uh, uh, variations available so there are remote control cars which have these kind of remote controls uh, they basically operate at uh, 27 megahertz frequency um, there, this is a kind of a very old technology uh, and some of these remotes also have channel A, B, C uh, some don't so for example the one for this buggy doesn't have channel just one channel whereas the one for uh, for this Hummer has three channels but uh, in this project uh, we will most likely lose the remote because it will be redundant for us maybe we will replace it with a software based uh, remote control so right now the frequency of the RC vehicle is not important from this perspective However, what is important to note while buying a remote control car is that there are remote control cars, one which have a brushed DC motor and the latest ones have the brushless DC motors. So a brushed DC motor is an old uh, DC volt, uh, motor uh, which uh, doesn't have a lot of power as compared to a brushless DC motor. However, in silo, even the brushed DC motor is quite powerful but if you compare it to a brushless DC motor it's not as powerful and maybe as not as fast when we tried this uh, vehicle uh, which has a brushed DC motor it goes quite fast in fact on the package it is written that it can go up to how much kilometers per second hour 180 up to 180 kilometers per hour but uh, I think it won't go that fast and we don't even need that kind of a speed but uh, when we did some tests um, last night, we found that it's quite fast. 
the problem with both of these vehicles is that they don't have any speed control on these remotes so we will have to do a bit more engineering to tame the speed of these vehicles uh, so for example when we push the forward button it basically drives the vehicle at one speed and when we push the reverse button again it uh, basically drives the vehicle at one speed what we would want in our project is to also the ability to control the speed of the vehicle and based on our research uh, it is possible to control the speed of a DC motor also and of course it is also uh, possible to control the speed of the brushless DC motor. So for this project uh, uh, we have a brush DC motor and another thing that we will need in this project is a camera which will go either on top of the vehicle uh, but of course again it spoils the look. So what we will do during the process is we will kind of fit it inside the vehicle somewhere. So we have a lot of options here because there is plenty of space. So we will hide this camera somewhere inside the vehicle. Um, we will also need uh, some other tools. For example, we will use the uh, Raspberry, uh, Raspberry Pi board. This board uh, is a, has a microprocessor on, on top of it and it's almost a computer so we can use this for advanced communication with another laptop which will do the processing of all the data which the vehicle is capturing and that computer will also send instructions back to this vehicle to understand what the vehicle is looking um, through, through the camera which is mounted inside. And we will also use uh, Adreno Uno board. Uh, right now we haven't decided whether we will use an Adreno Uno board or maybe we use a smaller version which is an Adreno uh, Nano board because uh, <coughs> what this board or this board will do is, uh, so these are basically a uh, microcontroller. They don't have a microprocessor on it. So they don't have any operating system. Um, so they, op they basically execute a set uh, instructions that we code in them. So the function of this device on the vehicle is, will be quite rudimentary in nature. So it will, for example, um, uh, it will, for example, tell the vehicle to either move forward or back, left or right. So it will just control the electronics, but it will not have any intelligence of its own so it is possible that instead of using one uh, large uno board of adreno we may end up using maybe one or two of these small um, nano boards so it will space save a lot of space so one example is that uh, this could uh, this will of course drive the motor so there are two motors in this car one at the back uh, which basically powers the rear uh, wheels and there is another motor at the mm -hmm. front which uh, will uh, which basically um, steers this vehicle either left or right so this small device according to my uh, assumption should be able to control these two motors but the problem is that these the motors inside this large vehicle uh, require a dedicated driver because this is a low voltage and low current device this Arduino board so we need a, a device like this this is a L298N a DC motor controller what this device does is that it basically connects with this small nano board it takes the low signal from nano which goes here through wiring and then it will drive the DC motors which are of high current rating and the Adreno board will actually send a pulse width modulated signal to this controller and then this controller can operate a motor even if the motor has a different voltage so for example this vehicle and even this vehicle they come with a 9.6 volt uh, nickel cadmium battery whereas our Adreno board operates on a 5 volt power. So we can use two type of powers in the same vehicle, one to drive small electronics or digital electronics like this 
and we will use the stock battery which came with this vehicle which will power our motors and any other devices which came with the with the with the vehicle so all all the high current high load uh, devices will work from this controller and what we are going to do next is uh, so this vehicle goes out of scene now so we keep it as one side uh, for the moment even the remotes are not required so we keep them on one side all the digital electronics will be used later so we keep them on, on the other side and what we need to do now is to uh, to basically dismantle this vehicle and understand the internals of this uh, vehicle so next step what we are going to do is we are going to remove the hood on the top first once we remove the hood we will actually expose the entire chassis and we will also expose all the internal uh, wiring and uh, all the mechanical parts so let's start with that process now and uh, we will show you exactly what looks inside and then i will explain you all the mechanical parts as well as existing wiring which comes with the vehicle so that we understand it better before we start modifying it <laughs> 